The NPP has launched its 2024 manifesto outlining key strategies aimed at transforming the economy, creating jobs, and addressing social and environmental issues. With promises such as the abolition of the controversial e levy and betting tax, and the expansion of infrastructure and healthcare services, the manifesto aims to create jobs and increase private sector growth. However, several key questions arise regarding the feasibility of these promises. Today on Hot Issues, we put these promises to the test and ask if this document is attainable. Can the NPP bring the economic freedom Ghana needs? I am Kemeni Amano, and in this episode, I sit with a man who knows campaigns all too well. He understands the public buttons to press to win an election. He was front and center when the NPP battled for power in the 2016 election. Eight years on, his expertise is being applied in formulating what could be a winning campaign for the Baumia Opoku Prempe ticket. But is it possible? My guest is vice chair of the Baumia campaign, Nana Komia. You're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you. The NPP had a successful campaign launch mm -hmm. last weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question that a lot of people are asking is, is this the manifesto that will break the eight? Absolutely. Absolutely. Have you taken the time to look I, at it? I have, but uh, I mean, what are you presenting to the Ghanaian people that makes you think that this document that you outdoored yes. will help you break the have eight? Have you taken the time to look at it? Mm -hmm. How did it grab you? You tell me. No, 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 but we're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to you that this is what will break the eight. Do you have a contrary opinion oh, no, after no. reading the document? Well, it, it wouldn't be my opinion, but the question I'll ask is, mm. what is your flagship program okay. in this manifesto? Mm. What is the flagship problem that we have in this country? This manifesto addresses it. If you ask us, the biggest problem that we've had in this country mm -hmm is our economy. And what has been the problem with the economy? Yeah. The, the biggest problem with the economy is that this is an import-driven economy. And it's an economy that has been characterized by fiscal imbalance. Fiscal imbalance simply means we spend more than we earn. So there is always a deficit. Now, if your salary is 5,000 CDs and your expenditure is 8,000 CDs, you would always be in trouble. That is what has characterized our economy. So the fiscal imbalance, which then means low revenue, we don't collect as much as to satisfy our needs. So the, the two of them reinforce each other. Mm -hmm. Because you don't collect enough money, you don't have enough money for your needs. So there's a fiscal imbalance all the time. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is that you are import dependent. That 70% of the things that we, we, we use in this country are imported. So then you need dollars. You don't have the dollars. So you go and borrow. So because of all these things, your CD, which is your currency, right. is always under pressure. Yeah. I, I, and the, I'll just finish in two seconds. And, the, and so the value of the price of the dollar is always going up. Now, because you are dependent on imports, you are not raising enough money. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the price of the dollar is always going up. It affects everything in your economy because costs go up. Because all the costs in the country are related to the dollar. Mm -hmm. This is the major problem. And our manifesto and the vision of our flag bearer answers to this problem. Indeed. I, I, no, and I don't disagree that you have outlined you know, uh, things you, you intend to commit to, to deal yeah. with that. Mm. Uh, but when we look at the opposition's uh, you know, promises so far, we haven't seen the manifesto yet. But if we look at the opposition's promises so far, we can talk about the 24-hour economy. Eight years ago, we could have talked about the NPP's uh, free senior high school. In yeah. this manifesto, we cannot pinpoint one thing that the NPP is focused on doing 
you know, if, if given another eight years or Baumia four years. Baumia means business. That is the focus. Okay. All of these things that I've talked about act as a damper on business. Anytime the, the, the shortage of dollars and the price of the dollar rises, which means the value of the city goes down, it's a cost to business. It's a cost to TV3. Mm -hmm. When the price of the dollar goes up, because we import fuel, because we, we need fuel for electricity, your cost as TV3 goes up in transport mm -hmm. and in your utilities. And because we use chemicals that we import to clean our water, your cost in water goes up. Okay. You see, but is, so is this also business suffers. You are not able to generate enough employment and all of that. Okay. If you deal with the macro situation, uh -huh. your fiscal imbalance, your low revenue, and your import dependency, business will just rise because cost will be stable and low and predictable. I see, but it's also... So the know, main this, this theme is Baumia means Baumia business. Means and all business. the things that we have in the manifesto uh -huh. is projected for business to thrive. Okay, and so, if we go so, into the detail, uh -huh. you can see why. Let's talk about the detail. I want us to look at the mm. economy, which you have also brought up. Mm. The problem you have, you know, painted in the scenario that you just discussed mm. uh, with the exchange rate and all that. Mm. It is also under this administration that we have seen the exchange rates rise from what it used to be to 15 CDs today, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, CD against mm -hmm. dollar. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if, if we are to look at the problem, then the MPP has created a problem and now it wants another, uh, you know, four years to solve the problem. Okay. Um, three things. Number one, you're talking about a 24-hour economy mm -hmm. that is, that's supposed to be the flagship. I wasn't going to talk about my, my, my opponents. But you have brought it up. Do you understand that 24-hour thing that you talk about? Oh, no. I, I absolutely understand the concept of a 24-hour economy. And I know what I'm asking you, 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 you understand know, has, has nothing to do with the 24-hour economy. I'm asking you that if the problem that you say the country has at the moment mm -hmm. has to do with our inability to control. Absolutely. And, and, and we dog. live in a country today where mm -hmm. our inflation mm -hmm. has had to go as, as high as 50, 54. 54%, come down to 23 20, that yeah. we see today. Mm -hmm. And then we have our exchange rates move from four or five CDs to yeah. 15 CDs yeah. today. The NPP then has created a problem and is hoping that we'll give them another chance to okay. solve. Now, let me answer you directly. Uh -huh. um, you know, when I talk about the CD and the macroeconomy, right. and the, I didn't talk about any party. Because when, in your own experience, did you see the CD stronger than the dollar? So it's a historic problem. It has been a problem with us since forever. Okay. Um, you said and I agree that a CD today, you need 15 plus something to buy the dollar mm -hmm. from four CDs. But before it was four CDs, what was it? It used to be one CD mm -hmm. to four CDs plus to 15 CDs plus. So... And before even it was one CD in the 2009 and so on, what was it? In fact, in 1992, um, if you are going to do the calculation, you, you, your, 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 your A will break down. No, but, but I, of the I, I loss so of I the guess CD. the question then will be, why wasn't the NPP able to deal with it you you, know, as you, best you, as you, it can? You, you would agree that in the first three years of the NPP, 2017 to 2019, it was fairly stable. But it was still losing value. But it was fairly stable. In those three years, it, was, it moved to about six cities. And then after 2020 to today, it started going haywire. And we know some of the major issues that have brought this about. Um, the COVID problem that we all went to. Every business suffered, including TV3, including my company, everybody suffered. Um, but that's not an excuse. It calls for new thinking. The new thinking is what the NPP is offering. Okay. I haven't seen the NDC talk about any new thing that they are going to do to correct this historic problem. If you have, you tell me, but I haven't seen it. Mm. But for us, we have said that 
on the matter of the fiscal imbalance, spending more than we earn, mm -hmm. we are going to amend the law, what we call the fiscal responsibility law, mm -hmm. which we have in this country, mm -hmm. to force us to be fiscally responsible, which means spending within our means. But the law says that we are going to tag the expenditure to the previous year's uh, 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 GDP. Mm -hmm. We are going to tighten that and make it to tax revenue. So you, the expenditure for this year should not, the one that will be approved by parliament, should not be 5% over last year's tax revenue. Because the tax revenue is more realistic. And we're going to pass that law and hold the government accountable to it to try and bring our fiscal imbalance to some mm. sort of balance. Then there's the low revenue. We are not collecting as much taxes. Indeed, um, we all know that we are collecting just about 14% of our GDP as mm. taxes. Other African countries are doing 20%, 25%. In advanced countries like UK and England, they're doing 30 40% taxes as a percentage of GDP. We are doing 14. Mm -hmm. It's low. But even the low one, we are still complaining. What Baumia and the NPP are going to do is that we are going to take a lot of expenditure from the public purse. Okay. Infrastructure, which can be commercially viable. So the highways, Accra Kumasi, Accra Sunyani, Accra Takradi, Accra Flau, Accra Ho. These are commercially viable infrastructure. We spend about 3% of our GDP, which is about 30 billion cities. We are going to take that expenditure from the public purse and let the private sector handle it because, because it is commercially viable. Private people will invest the money and toll the road for 10 years or 5 years to recover their money because they look at the traffic flow and all of that. They can mm. recover. So it is commercially viable. People would come together and put, put up money and go sign a contract and do the road across to Kumasi, six lane, four lane, and say to government, we are going to toll it for 50 cities, government agrees, and we are going to recover our money in five years or 10 years. Mm. And I can tell you, you leave that to private sector and take that away from public finance. So that huge expenditure will be gone. It will help us to keep within our, our, our means. Now, the, 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 the matter of revenue, like I said, we collect just about 14% mm -hmm. of GDP. Active taxpayers like you and me, we're just about 4 million people. The other people are largely informal, not informal uh, uh, engagement like you and right. me. We haven't been able to identify them and organize them so they, too, they can pay their taxes. Because of the Ghana card, and your Ghana card is also your tax number now, and the Ghana card has been issued to over 17 million people. So the 13 million or so who don't pay taxes uh -huh. can now be identified because of the Ghana card. Because all okay. of them have Ghana card. And they have, the Ghana card is your tax identification number. Okay. So if you take even 2 million of those uh, uh, 13 million people as people who are 18 but in school and so on, not earning an income, we are still looking at about 10 million people outside the tax bracket. Okay. Plumbers who come and do some plumbing work in your house, painters, uh, electricians, maids, and so on. All of these people have now been captured by the Ghana card. And we're going to organize to bring all of them. We're going to bring a new tax system that is mm. simple for them, a flat rate. I see. And easy to pay through your phone and receipt it. I, I see. So, so, Nana, I have a few questions for you. Let's start off with on that the, one? Yes, okay. on the taxes. So, you, mm -hmm. you have connected Ghana Card to, based, based on the digitalized platform yeah. that you will mm -hmm. create, mm -hmm. you would have uh, people outside of the tax net now that you can bring yeah. in. But you can identify the people with numbers, but connecting the ability to pay taxes is also a different thing. What, well, how, well, how are so, you bridging so that? So, you say that plumbers artisans generally pay 200 cities a month no complex thing we are not saying come and declare your income and bring us your audited accounts we say you are a painter you probably don't have a registered company and all of that but you do work pay a hundred cities a month you can pay 
through your phone, you get your receipt through your phone, and then you become a taxpayer member. That allows you to enjoy certain facts. Because you are going mm. to put in sanctions so that some of the things that you need in your normal uh, engagement, if you don't show proof, <laughs> you're not going to have it. But it's simple and it's not expensive mm. so that everybody can pay. Can you imagine if this 10 to 11 million people who are outside the tax bracket today, because they are in informal business. Can you imagine if you, you're able to bring all of them and they are paying 100 CDs a month mm. to support the direct tax that you and me are paying because we are identifiable. Mm. Can you imagine what that is going to do for the economy I see. on a monthly basis? So that's the revenue side. So whilst we're taking, we're taking measures, tax reform, bringing the informal people to increase the revenue, we're also reducing the expenditure by taking off Projects that can be funded by the private sector are taking that off so that our expenditure is being cut and our revenue is being increased so we can have the fiscal balance that has been a problem of this economy. Man, and then the import dependency. We'll come to import dependency, but Nana, okay. why, would we, why would the NPP want to tax uh, more uh, people who already feel they, are, they have a high cost of living, uh, they, they feel that they do not have en enough money to fund their livelihoods. Do you live in your own house? No. I live in my own house. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I had a plumber come and do because some leakage in one of the guest uh, toilets. I had a plumber come and do some work there. He charged me 250 cities. Mm -hmm. You have a painter coming to come and paint your another Christmas is coming. Every many people are going to paint their homes. The charge that they will give to you, and I'm just one person, multiplied by the millions of homes that all these artisans that we employ. Do you have a driver? No. You don't have a personal driver? No. I have a personal driver. I don't think he pays taxes even though I pay him at the end of the month. I don't think he pays taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know how I'm going to, I don't, what, how much tax does he pay? But if you have a system that will tell him that as a, as a driver, you're supposed to pay 100 CDs mm -hmm. or 50 CDs. And it's simple. You just pay on your, through your phone. You get your receipt through your phone. And that is it. I myself would deduct that money and make sure he pays and so on. Absolutely. I, I get that. But what I want you to address is the perception that, and for some people it's lived experiences, mm -hmm. that the cost of living now mm -hmm. is high. Yeah. And so if the plan of the M MPP in 2025 is to ensure that you're bringing all these artisan artisanal workers outside informal tax, sector, outside yeah. of the tax mm -hmm. bracket into, into the it. tax bracket mm -hmm. just so you get them to pay more taxes mm -hmm. no no to pay to, to pay taxes, taxes. obviously yes. i mean they're paying no. direct taxes right yeah but to make to pay more direct taxes yeah. mm -hmm. The question is, how then? How much will be left for them the, to be able the cost, to, the cost of to living, live up to the cost of living? You are a salaried worker. Uh -huh. I am a salaried worker. We all face the cost of living, isn't it? But we pay our, our taxes. You and I, uh -huh. we pay our taxes. Right. We don't say because the cost of living has gone up. We will pay our taxes. So we are looking at a situation where it is equitable. Why? Because we all use the roads, uh -huh. don't we? We all use the public services, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So you are going to pay your fair share. And like I'm saying, it's not going to be anything complex where they tell you, go and bring this, go and deduct this, go and add this and all of that. Right. Just a flat scheme mm -hmm. that they can easily pay through their phone and get their receipt. They don't need to visit any tax office and fill a form, nothing. Mm -hmm. And you see, it's been tried in... Other countries, and when you look at their tax to GDP, 40% mm. and so on, we are bringing the similar thing here, fixing it at a rate that everybody can pay their fair share. But because of the numbers, millions of people, it will come to huge amount. That's why we are. I able see. To so the, the other question, the, the other question is, what do they get in return? You know, deciding that paying tax is the right thing to do, no matter how minimal my you know income is i will pay tax what do they get in return but they, they, they are doing business mm -hmm. when they are going to paint your house 
They travel on the roads, isn't it? They travel on the roads. They enjoy the police security, isn't it? They enjoy all these public services for the same reason that you and I pay taxes. Uh, recently, in my area, let me just, I don't know where you live, but where I live, um, I live on the Lekma Road, uh -huh. the, the famous Lekma Road. Um, recently, just two, three years ago, the, the road from Manet Junction to the Beach Road, that's the Lekma Road, uh -huh. has been done into a dual carriage. Everybody's business has been enhanced. Even if your business has been enhanced, the property, the value of the properties have gone up. Yeah, that, that's, now, that's, now that's travel... people at the top of the pyramid. No, no, but when, I you're, mean... when if you're a plumber, you travel on the roads, you enjoy police protection. Isn't it, it? It, it, so I mean, it doesn't directly feed into their cost of living. It doesn't. But you, it, you, you it doesn't directly feed into any intervention in the event they lose their jobs. Do you think that the countries where everybody is paying something because they are in the tax net, they like paying tax, well, or, I, the, or I, their cost I of mean, living is they, low? They, there's a social, it's your, it's your no, but, but there's, there's a social net for places where you know everybody is within the tax net. Yeah. They are paying their taxes. Mm -hmm. There are places where your taxes take care of education. Yeah. And so you do not pay for education mm -hmm. uh, to a certain level. There are places where it takes care of your health care and all that. But you are you making know, my case better you know, for No, me. no. So, so, because no, no, you, but, go, but, you, go no, to, you, you go to your child goes to school, secondary school, is free. It has to be paid for by taxes. Uh, oh, that's a very... So you're, you're that's, even that's, making my case for me. No, that's a very long conversation we can have. I do not want us to look at the free senior <laughs> high school. But, no, no, I'm but, saying... But on the subject of reducing... You're cost making of living, my case better for me. Because no, you've talked about the I, education. I want us to wrap Whether up on that. Whether you're a plumber or you are a seamstress who is not paying tax, when your child goes to school, they are free there's, education. There, a lot of them will tell you that they are even paying more. We know that Education Watch has come up with a, you know... A, a research that, that indicated that parents were still paying a lot, even uh, under did, the, free, the free, free senior about, high school. Did the research talk about what parents would be paying if there was no free education? Uh, no, I mean, balanced. I mean, but if, if, if it's free senior high school, then we uh, don't expect the, pa the pa parents to be paying as much as they you, are right you, now. You, you, but but we, we, we won't discuss matter. free senior yeah. high school. Okay. On the subject of reducing cost of living, I, mm -hmm. I want us to look at uh, exactly what uh, mm. the NPP manifesto is Mm -hmm. uh, you know, proposing. Mm. It talks about uh, stabilizing the prices of food uh, produced locally. It plans to work with the DBG mm -hmm. and the Ghana incentive based risk sharing system for agricultural land. Mm -hmm. These things, these two things, the top mm -hmm. things, are al mm -hmm. already uh, ongoing. If they could deal with food prices, they would have already. Mm -hmm. So why are we seeing it here again? Okay. Agriculture is a major driver of the cost of living. You agree? Food. Because uh -huh. we all have to eat twice a day or three times a day. We need to make our agriculture in such a way that food prices are stable and affordable. Very often, we've looked at production, the farmer producing. So we say, let's give the farmer incentives, uh, for planting for food and jobs, uh, fertilizer, all of that. But when they produce, because of the volume of production, the price falls. Mm -hmm. So you and I will enjoy cheap tomato, uh, 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 prices of tomato and, and onion and yam at harvest time. But the farmer who produce, because of the cheap prices, they lose. Okay. Now, the new agriculture policy that we are going to have is going to deal with the farmer's own income so that they have an incentive to keep producing. When they produce and the, and the price falls because there's no support, how would they keep producing? So we are going to revamp agriculture, looking at the production and also looking at the post-production, mm -hmm. the marketing support, the warehousing, the, the food processing. So that the reason why in Europe and so on, the price is stable and the farmers can produce, so that they pay you not to produce. They, they come to your farm and pay you because when you produce, they have to spend money to store it or give it to some poor country somewhere. They don't, so they pay you money. We have to do the same to make sure that the farmer has a, a fixed, a reliable income, that farming becomes a business. 
That's a new thing that we're going to do. The usual things like AI technology and bringing in uh -huh. uh, Lime and all of that is something that the concept of protecting the income of the farmer so that agriculture actually becomes a business. And then transport is a factor in the price of food. We're saying that, and, and also the cost of living. We're saying that we are going to introduce electric buses. And before the end of the year, you're going to see a lot of electric buses coming for public transport. Mm. That will reduce the impact of fuel, which, is, which comes from the change in price of the dollar, because battery, electric buses just means the car is running on battery instead of an engine, internal combustion that uses petrol. So it will reduce the cost of transport. Hmm. We've also talked about housing. Housing is a major factor in the cost of living, rent. And what drives rent? The supply of housing. Government is going to establish land banks where government has bought, say, 50 acres all over the place and put in infrastructure, electricity, water, the whole roads. Hmm. So that you, the private investor, and there's a vibrant private sector housing industry, but they have to go and look for their own 50 acres. And you know the issue about land tenure. The moment you pay, another person comes, he says he's the tenant, he's the cousin. Right. When government owns the land and government has put in the infrastructure, you are now able to engage with the private sector so they can just go in and build and you can engage them as to how affordable it should be. Now it's laissez-faire. Laissez-faire means you leave it. Uh -huh. So they go and find their own land. They pay three or four chips before they get the land. They now must put in electricity to get a meter, not to talk about 400, 500 meters. They have to put in the roads. They have to put in water. Government to do all of that. All they have to do is go and build. Uh -huh. And we believe that that would, one, increase the, the, the supply of housing, and two, bring down the cost of housing. Right. For other people, we won't talk about electricity. <clears throat> electricity is a big factor in the cost of living mm. and is driven because the electricity is generated with uh, oil that is bought with dollar. We are going to bring in 2,000 megawatts of electric power using solar. Mm. Our consumption of electricity is about 5,000 megawatts in this country. Right. If you have 2,000 coming from solar, so um, your lights and your fan and these basic things can all be powered by solar. Would well, that so. also be based on PPP? Yes. Government is going to come in with the manufacturing of the panels, the manufacturing of the batteries, maybe the inverter, which converts, maybe that one is high tech. Mm. You have to import. But batteries, and fortunately we have a lithium uh, industry coming up. I see. The panels, we can do those things here. When you go to the secondary schools that are doing this... Uh, TVET and so on. They are doing wonderful things. And we have to engage them formally. I, they can research. So if you're able to do 2,000 megawatts of power mm. coming from solar, so I mean, over, over what period do you see uh, the NPP being able to do these things? Over the first four years. Over the over first four over years. First yes. four years. Mm. I see. Uh, we'll, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at other sectors that the manifesto speaks about. Don't worry. Well, we're still here on hot issues, and my guest today is Nana Komia, he's vice chair for the Baumia campaign team. He's also MD for STC. And uh, Nana, thank you so much for your patience and talking to us. We've been looking at uh, rebounding the economy and some mm -hmm. of the things that mm -hmm. the uh, NPP plans to do mm. if given the nod and mm. it manages to uh, mm. break the eight. We have looked at reducing cost of living, but the manifesto also talks about uh, creation of new jobs. And mm. under that, mm. it says that the party or the current <clears throat> administration has created over 2.3 million jobs in the last eight years. And it goes on to say that it is more jobs created than any other government has managed to do in eight years. And now where, are this, where is this figure coming from? The 2.3 million jobs in the past eight years. From Senate. I see. So, in, so, so in, which, in which 20, sectors? In 2016, uh -huh. 
the, the total contribution active members to SNIT okay. was 1.3 million. All right. Today, it's about 2.1 million. Mm. I'm asking because the uh, labor statistics of 2022 mm -hmm. said that about 1.76 million people were unemployed mm -hmm. in the th as of the third quarter of that year. Mm -hmm. uh, same period, 2023, 1.85 million people were unemployed. Yeah. And so if we created 2.3 million jobs over the eight years that you... 2.1. 2.3. Uh, that's, what, that's what it says over here. 2.3. Okay. Or, or there's a correction, 2.1. Well, it's uh, 2.3 over here. Well, okay. Let's it says 2.3 mm. 2 million jobs were created mm. in the past eight years. Mm. Why do we still have 1.76 million people unemployed? Because it doesn't add up. No, no, it doesn't. Because you need to create much more than the 2.1 or the 2.3. No, I understand that. You need to create more. So, I mean, so you've you, created 2.3 million jobs. Yes, in the last seven years. But... Let me give you the 1.85 million people are unemployed in this country. But yes. if you have more jobs than the number of people unemployed. No, unemployed as of now. As of, as of 2023. Mm -hmm. As the, of now. The number of yeah, unemployed people yeah. is 1.85 million. So what million. it means is that if those 2.3 jobs were not created, the number of unemployed would have been about 4 million. We we'll need a breakdown of the 2.3 million year by year so we can compare with the labor statistics Absolutely. on the number of people Absolutely. who got jobs. Because mm. The, mm. The, there's not a single year where we had jobs up to 500,000. It's always been around 310,000 or less uh, from, you know, the, the, the period and the review. Yeah. So, In fact, like, like you are confirming the SNE data. The SNE data is 281. Two hundred and eight, uh, eighty-one, three, two, eight, two hundred. Yeah. So, so what I'm doing two. now is I'm questioning the two point three million jobs that you say you over have created seven years. over, over, oh, yeah, over the last over seven years, over the past yes. seven years, yeah. right? I see. Mm. Very well. Mm. So, one of the ways that the NPP plans to deal with unemployment mm. is uh, create jobs through tax amnesty program. What does that mean? <clears throat> oh, um, the well, there's, you know, we are bringing in total tax reform. Right. The current tax that we have, and I'm sure if you spoke to your oh. corporate manager or your finance manager, they would show you how, even VAT, mm -hmm. when you go and buy stuff from the supermarket, you see the VAT, how it's calculated. It's all very complex. And so you have a high level of people trying to dodge taxes. Mm -hmm. What the NPP is going to bring is a total reform of the tax system. Make it straightforward, easy to pay, easy to enforce. Uh, you don't need to go to file, go and fill. You can file on phone. Uh, you'll be assessed through digital means. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to come to your office and come and sit at your finance office for two weeks because the system will be very simple, transparent, equitable and easy to comply. But how will it create jobs? Now, the, because of this, a lot of the companies who owe taxes, we are saying that we'll wipe the slate clean. We'll give you tax amnesty. So all of, all of us can then come onto the new tax system. Mm -hmm. We are expecting that the monies that you save, that we are supposed to pay in taxes, you will use it to create jobs. But the main strategy to create jobs, as we've outlined in our manifesto, when you get a stable macro situation, mm -hmm. uh, where your costs are stable and low, that is when you can employ more people. When the macro situation is unstable and the price of the dollar is rising every day, and so it affects the price of petrol, it affects the price of electricity. It affects mm -hmm. the price of water. It affects the price of transport. You will not be able to create jobs. So the macro stability mm -hmm. is the major plank for job creation. We are also going to do uh, to win ourselves away from the dollar. We are going to do aggressive import substitution. Mm -hmm. we, every government, every leader has talked about it. So it's a matter of focused leadership. We've tried John Mahama. It didn't work. Baumia is going to bring 
a new focus, but he has not been tried. Mm. We're going to do aggressive import substitution. And that will create a lot of jobs. We're going to do a jobs abroad program. As we speak, we have so many teachers, we have so many nurses and artisans who are not working. The, there are countries abroad who are also short of skilled labor, teachers, nurses, artisans, and so on. We are going to have a formal process that these people, many of them trained at state expense, teachers, nurses, and so on, who can be offloaded abroad in a formal arrangement <clears throat> where they can also remit money back, mm -hmm. deducted and remitted. That would, that would <clears throat> help in creating jobs for them now. If you want to go, you have to, alone, you have to go through like a hundred obstacles. But when there's it's a government program, it will be streamlined, it will be smooth, and you can be paying back something N back N to Nana, do, you, do you agree that a tax amnesty <clears throat> program will not create any jobs? No, the, the hope, that's why... Uh, because the tax amnesty, amnesty program already the, exists. The, it hasn't created any jobs. Uh, that's the, why I'm surprised you brought it up. Be, but, but because it's there. Okay. It's here in your manifesto. Yes, yes. I, I haven't denied it. Okay. I'm saying to you that the monies that will be forgiven, we are going to engage them to see how they can invest those monies in new jobs. I see. That, that, yeah, that is the whole. As, but the, the, the main... Assuming they come forward. The other thing I well, want to... They have an amnesty. They have to come forward uh, so that we all go to the new tax regime. The regime where... It will be equitable, it will be streamlined, it will be simple to administer, and you can do everything digitally. Okay, the other thing I want to identify in... We haven't finished about our jobs. But in anyway, the job creation. Have, no, yeah. we're still okay. on job creation, okay. right? It would appear that you want to create jobs for artisans, carpenters, masons, welders, etc., and build environment professionals uh, to maintain public infrastructure through a reviewed and resourced PWD. Um, while I will seek explanation on that a little bit more, when I look at the areas in which you want to create jobs, I, it makes me ask the question whether or not these jobs are expected to be long-term or these are just a, a, you know, short-term jobs that could end at some point. Well, um, if you have... Um an artis artisanal program mm -hmm. that will then depend on the availability of the of the works, whether it's housing, whether it's roads, or whatever. Um, so some of them will be shorter term than others, and but you have to have a combination of both. When you go abroad and you are a mason in America, you are employed to the extent that you get some job to do, but the economy. Is such that there are always projects going on simply because there's macro stability. So, um, I mean, you have a situation where contractors are not being paid. We're saying that from, from we are going to have a program to pay all contractors, mm. and we are going to have a program where, I mean, there are risks, but we're going to have a program where people will be paid for contracts executed within a time period mm. so that they can then continue to do more work and keep on employing more artisans as we go on. And these artisans, too, will be paying some taxes um, um, at a level to yeah. a simplified system that I spoke but, to But if, if the jobs created but, are not long-term jobs, it means that government's ability to get the taxes continuously will also be affected. And, and I hope that the campaign may have, uh, you know, taken notice of that as the, well. The, the but tax will be fixed in such a way. I mean... But if I don't a, have a job, I can't pay tax. A plumber. That's why I'm, I'm a little a that you don't have plumb plumbers coming to work for you. <laughs> I have them coming, electricians to come and there's some fault with some uh, socket and they have to come. And if they don't find work... Well, or, or, they, they, or register they, or register their work in such a way that you would know that they work. There are other works that are long term and stable. In which sectors do you okay. hope to create those jobs? I have mentioned the import substitution. Okay. There is no excuse for us in this country not to be processing pepper and onion and palm nuts 
and cocoa yam and plantain and mango and all of that. It's been done by private people under all kinds of ad hoc arrangements. There's going to be a state program to aggressively organize these private people with strong state support. I'll give you one instance that I have personal knowledge of. Blue Skies, mm -hmm. which processes a lot of pineapple. Many times they have to go and import the pineapple because these things are seasonal. So one of the innovations that we are going to bring in agriculture is to do greenhouse farming, which mm -hmm. allows you to farm all year round. Okay. So if it's pineapple, it's not going to be just three months and it's gone and you have to import from Togo or Burkina because they are in season. Or if it's pepper, you don't have to uh, do three, four months and then the rest you have to go to Togo because we're going to do a lot of greenhouse farming so you can farm all year round and then make sure that the production is... And then the processing of this. You know we are the third largest importer of canned tomato mm. in the world, Ghana. I see. Now, I was going to give you a personal experience. This um, company called Blue Skies, who process a lot of pineapple. And when it's out of season, they have to import. But you know, when they came at first, they needed refrigeration. Now, to transport it from the factory to Thermaport, because it had to be kept at a certain temperature, was a major item because of traffic. The government at that time did a quick solution, gave them police escorts for their vans. And that saw their volumes rise through the roof because now it took them 15 to 20 minutes instead of two, three hours uh -huh. to move produce from their factory to the port. That kind of active, aggressive engagement. And you see, the latter day countries which industrialize and who are now doing post industrialize the Japans, the Koreans, the Singapore, that is the same form that mm. they use. Oh, we see. just have to go there, study it, adapt it to our process. But all of this is leadership. Oh, so you're sending people there to study? Oh. Well, you have to look at best practices and adapt. Okay. That's it's what because of what does. you said. I just told that, that's to no, that's what everybody so, does. So, Nana, what digital skills are you giving the one million use? Oh. Do the jobs oh. already exist? Are you creating those jobs? You see, now, mm, you can set up your business. I mean, you know this better than I do. Mm -hmm. S sell, um, uh, uh, get, your get through your supplies instead of traveling from Accra to Kumasi to go and get your footwear and anima. You can get them to bring you digitally <clears throat> the samples, <clears throat> check the, <clears throat> sorry, Check the quality that you want, uh, approve the quality, send them money, uh, and they bring the goods without you moving to Kumasi. Uh -huh. It all needs digital skills. The future of the world is digital. Right. When you look at the top 10 companies in the world today, they are all digital companies. We need to prepare our people for that because they will be affected their jobs will be affected whether they like it or not. And so training them would allow them to follow the transition and would allow them to find jobs on their own. It's a, it's a key thing. Mm. Yeah. And when you go abroad, okay. hmm, when you go abroad, you can't go and take your $20 and buy a ticket to take the train. You have to go through, through a machine. We need to train our people. Uh -huh. So that one is very important. I understand the NDC too, well. they have a similar provision, which shows you that there's cross-party agreement on that matter. <laughs> I like how you put <laughs> it. Apart from the 24-hour economy, <laughs> which you are going to tell me about. It, I, right? no, I, I didn't say happen. I was going to tell you, I but I did that. say that I want to focus mm. on your manifesto, oh. right? Mm. So um, we've talked about the <laughs> 1,000 use. You have ex explained yeah. the digital skills mm. you would give to them. Mm. What I'm asking then is, are we looking at these people being self status? Are we looking at a, an industry where they will be needed and they'll be employed there? Or, or we are creating, you know, those avenues for them already? All of it. Oh, I see. All of it. Oh, we, oh, also, right. we also are going to legislate mm -hmm. a Buy Made in Ghana program. We are going to a new one. Yes, 
Because everybody says we have to buy made in Ghana. Okay. We are going to put it into, into law. law. Mm. So that if you are going to spend public money to buy anything, you have to show that you can't get that product made in Ghana. I see. And we are going to bring a law to that. So oh. all this, even water, we import water. Look at the variety of bottled water that we have in this country. Uh -huh. And yet other people import water. I'm sure you are aware. No, no, no. You're telling me, where are they importing the water from? From all over. The parties that you go to, do you check some of the water that they serve you? On a, so, so we're saying that we have to buy made in Ghana. And we're not going to leave it at a stage of slogan uh -huh. or principle. We are going to legislate it. Hmm. So that if you're going to use public money, you have to buy made in Ghana. Uh -huh. And we know that that, that, that would help the springing up of many enterprises producing stuff in Ghana because mm. of it be a huge market well, one of the, one of the things that uh, you know industry would need is power in your manifesto you say you implement a significant shift in electricity tariff structure to a regime in which commercial rates are either equal to or lower than residential rates never higher to power industries and uh, businesses what is the thinking behind this or oh, just to you know in industry rates normally they call them business they are higher than domestic but it's the industry that produces value for us. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to uh, bring equity. So industry will be paying the same rates as domestic. Really? Mm. How will that help us? That's at now. Industry consumes it, 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 it much have, more than residential. Well, no, no. We're talking of the rates that uh -huh. you, they pay. If you pay 10 cities per kilowatt, they pay about 18 cities per kilowatt. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we're going to bring that cost down. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that the consumption of industry is high. Yeah. If you say that industry and residential, uh, you know, addresses should pay the same uh, uh, rate, it will still have industry consuming much of the elect electricity, but, you know, you might not get money coming in as much. We are not saying they should pay a flat rate. You don't pay a flat rate for your domestic. I, I absolutely uh, understand so that. So your consumption will still determine how much you pay, but the rate... The rate should be the, the same. The rate should be the same. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm saying. It's, so it's an incentive to industry and to jobs. How do we juxtapose that? And, and you know, I don't want to get on the bad side of industry, so I want mm. to move on, on mm. from that. But how do we juxtapose that to um, the IMF's position or one of the things we've heard from the program mm. uh, that we should be paying uh, VAT on electricity? Do we plan to still do that? The, the VAT on electricity is because the IMF is giving you money. Mm -hmm. They're giving you money. Right. And they want to see that you can generate revenues to pay back the money. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've suggested this VAT, which is a tax on electricity. If we can show alternative means of raising money, like this tax reform that I've mm. told you that we envisage, will bring 10 million more people into direct taxes every month. And you can show the IMF. They just want you to show them that you can generate the money. And we can tell them that we don't like this VAT on electricity. We are rather going to do this tax reform. And this is what we are going to do to generate the money. So they will not be bothered. All they want you is to show them that you can generate the money. So we don't see the NPP putting VAT on electricity tariff? We have said okay. that when we come, because of the new revenue measures, mm. we'll do away with not just VAT on electricity, we'll do away with e-levy mm. and all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's because so, so on the subject of... Because we are, we've put, we are putting in place um, a, a process that is going to allow 10 to 11 more million mm -hmm. people to contribute to revenue. I see. Residential users or domestic users of electricity will also say that the cost of electricity is high. Is there any intervention for them as well? We have already spoken that we are going to bring in 2,000 megawatts of solar. That is about one third of our electricity needs. We need about 4,500 megawatts. If you've got 2,000 of them coming from the sun, mm. which doesn't need petrol, uh -huh. It will just bring down... But it doesn't make power cost. cheaper for no, no, it will make domestic power users. No, oh, no, for domestic users. How would it make power cheaper for because domestic the cost users? Because the cost of 
solar energy uh, is much, 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 much cheaper. No, but for those who continue, I understand that. Those mm -hmm. who, because, you know, it comes with a one-time installation cost. Yes. But I'm saying that for those who would still be on our current grid, mm -hmm. because they cannot afford the installation cost of uh, the solar panels, mm -hmm. What is in there for them when they tell you that uh, tariffs at the moment oh, are too okay, high? I see what you mean. No. It is the solar, you know, the electricity is a mix. Right. You agree? Mm -hmm. So there's water, which you call the hydro. A Kosombo coming in for about uh, 900 to 1,000 megawatts. Boom. Is it boom? Yeah, boom. And also bui, all of this water, we call the hydroelectricity. Then there are also the thermals, the generators, where you have to put in the gas or the fuel. And the gas, we import a lot of it mm -hmm. from Nigeria and so on. And then we also have a little bit from Atuabu. As for the oil, we import the greater part of it to right. power it. So it's a mix. It's mm -hmm. a mix of water and generators. Okay. We are bringing in solar as well. Mm -hmm. So... It's not you who is going to install panels. It right. will be part, will of, be the, part of the, the grid. Okay. And the because that one grid. is so cheap. Because you see, water, for example, is about seven cents per kilowatt. Okay. And the generators are about 14 cents, 15 mm. cents per kilowatt. Solar will be about two cents. So it will bring down the cost of mm. electricity. I see. I want us to look at governance because one of the things that. You know, this... Once before I go there, right. you, you've read of our gold exploration program. Yes. Um, I believe that uh, you plan We are to going to, as part of the measures to stabilize the city, we are going to go on gold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As part of the new thinking mm -hmm. to stabilize the city. Because gold is money, like dollar. Right. But we have gold here. Mm -hmm. We have gold here. But we haven't thought about using it to back our currency. Mm -hmm. Baumia and the NPP are going to aggressively use gold to back our currency. In the last uh, couple of months, we had only 8.7 tons of gold in the Bank of Ghana. America had 8,000 tons. Mm. UK, Germany, 4,000 tons. Mm -hmm. They don't produce any gold. We produce the gold. Yes, we had only eight. Right. We are going to aggressively buy gold because gold can be exchanged just like the dollar. I see. And that, so, so, so Nana. But then, you know, the geological survey has shown us that there are about 43,000 square kilometers of this country right. with gold deposits. Mm -hmm. We are going to exploit that, empowering Ghanaians to do that. And once the, the deposits are proven, you would easily attract the capital and the know how. We would employ the, peop the people who have the know-how and attract the capital. Mm -hmm. And these businesses will be owned by Ghanaians. Okay. There's going to be an explosion mm. of the gold industry in the hands of Ghanaians well. in this country. Well. And the proven reserves are estimated at a value of $10 trillion. Mm. I see. Lying there. We're going to bring that into play. No, no, just, just a few things because I want us to look at some uh, trending issues as well. Mm. Um, on governance, your government says that you will reduce the size of ministers to 50. Okay. At the beginning of this administration, mm -hmm. uh, President Akufuado was sure that he needed 110 ministers yeah. uh, to be able to deliver on the work that you, you have at hand. So what has changed between then and now? You mean the numbers of... Yes. Why, why 50 ministers? Why 50 ministers? Because we want to bring down the costs of public administration. And for me, it's not the most But is the, is, the, is the MPP only now coming to that realization? Because back in 2017, I believe that uh, the entire country might be an exaggeration, but there mm -hmm. were voices that criticized the large size of government, mm -hmm. uh, the 110 ministers we began with. Yes. Uh, yes. So but it's, now it's been brought down to about 80. But 80 is still high. I'm, yes. What I'm asking is... And we're saying that we'll bring it further to 50. Uh -huh. What's wrong with it? You should applaud uh, why, No, but why has it taken you seven years to come to that realization? It sounds like something populist you put in your manifesto so that the Ghanaian people will be happy with you. But they will hold us to it. Mm. Once the manifesto, they hold us to it. 
But you see, it's not even the ministers per se. Mm -hmm. the, the entire cost of public administration. One of the drivers of cost of public administration, MPs, when I was in parliament, I used to be in parliament, there were 200 members of parliament. Today, there are 275. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, in another 10 years, we're going to go to 300. The NPP is saying that going forward, we are going to mm. make sure that you don't increase the number of parliamentarians. Right. We're going to do that because there's a provision in the law that says that a district should not fall within, a constituency should not fall mm. within two districts. So when any government wants to increase seats in parliament to, to favor their gerrymandering, mm. they just create districts. Will you have and once they create districts, you have to create constituencies. We are saying that we are going to remove that provision so that the creation of districts will have nothing to do with constituencies. Okay. That will bring down the cost of government. Travels. Hmm? I have been a minister before. And I can tell you, travels are a huge drain yeah. on the public purse. Mm -hmm. We're going to streamline it. But why didn't you streamline it while you were in office? You, you've had the last seven years to be able to thought, do that. I thought we were talking about the future. Uh, no, but... I thought the, we were talking the, about the, the No, 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 hang on. The past and the present of the NPP mm -hmm. will inform whether or not this document has credibility. Mm -hmm. So if you tell me that you, you thought we were talking about the future, that's not good enough for the Ghanaian people. Mm -hmm. If you're telling us that travel is a problem, which the Ghanaian people have been telling you all this while, mm -hmm. and yet in the last seven years, we, we have had very unpalatable spendings on travel and the administration didn't do anything about it. Why should we believe you that you would do Why something? Why do you say Why that? Why should we believe you that you would do something about travel? Why should we believe you that you now have up to 4,000 staffers? Be because it's a new administration. Okay. And also, something has been done about cabin travels. I'm sure you are aware. Uh, you are aware that there's something some measures that have been taken to reduce the... But the reason why I'm bringing it in mm -hmm. is that it's a huge drain on the public purse. Mm. You bring in a process that it is centralized so that the minister just doesn't get up and go or the chief executive doesn't get up and go, that there's going to be a centralized process. Mm. Mm. I see. It will, be, it will save a lot in public administration. You, saw, you see Bamiya going around in his campaign in a bus the cost of the campaign is reduced drastically right? because I don't need to follow in my own Indeed, car Indeed, so there's a lot of focus on private sector. Mm. How about public institutions like the STC where you are? Mm. Uh, what does this manifesto hold for it? What does the future of the NPP we, hold We are going for? to reform the public sector. Okay. The whole function of the public sector is to support the private sector. Yeah. And the public sector should come in when... There is no private sector response. So what are we going but to do with places like the STC? We are going to reform state enterprises. I see. For example, STC. But it's not here. Sorry? It's not here. And the NPP has made us understand from the what, past What is that not here? The reforming uh, the reform. state institutions Ooh, I'll tell or you state, next, state next, enterprises. Next week. Well, now it's just three months. But next week, there's going to be a meeting at uh, Kwau. Uh-huh where the president and the chief of staff will be in attendance, all to talk about reform of the state sector. I see. But the we main thing is to empower you, the private sector. I see. We have to go, unfortunately. Just to have, have more time for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Anna. Thank Anna you. is vice chair of the NPP's uh, campaign team, Baumier's campaign team. He's also <coughs> managing director for STC. I hope you, uh, you know, enjoyed our conversation. It's been a very thrilling one. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is Hot Issues. I'm Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.